Times have changed so much. And we can't simply turn a deaf ear to young people who are struggling to find work. Now, it's getting a lot harder to find jobs, even for skilled workers, because we're entering a new era of artificial intelligence. How to respond to such a changing world and how to prepare ourselves is of prime importance, I believe. The world's wealth seems to be divided 20 to 80, according to Prito's law, meaning that 20% of the population controls 80% of the wealth. This rule can be applied to explain many other phenomena. Many things appear to be divided 20 to 80. And the fact of the matter is that 20 to 80 hasn't really been all that bad. We're witnessing the world becoming 1 to 99. There's no wonder a movement called Occupy Wall Street took place not too long ago with the slogan of We're the 99%. The goal of the movement was to take down the 1%. My question is that if we do take down the 1%, will the wealth controlled by them be distributed to the 99%? Will it be distributed fairly among us? Can we expect a nice equal distribution? I doubt it. I am, uh, I'm not at all advocating monopolies or the wealthy becoming wealthier. On the contrary, I'm very concerned. Even if we want to prevent uh, the concentration of wealth, we must have a realistic perspective on concepts such as income disparity, and the wealth gap. Think about what those rich folks possess today. Simply speaking, will the wealth come down to the poor if we completely disassemble all the big corporations? Many are still viewing this situation as a feudal system. In the feudal system, there was a minority of landowners and the majority were poor. If the land owned by those landlords was taken away and given to the poor, would wealth redistribution be possible or not? That's possible with land in a feudal system. On the other hand, would wealth redistribution be possible with current forms of wealth, such as factories or computer systems? Can they be dismantled and still retain their intrinsic values, thus making redistribution possible? That's not likely. We have no choice but to leave them alone. They have their own roles. It's best if we can do it ourselves. Let's take care of ourselves. In addition, the government can do only so much for us with their aid of 1.5%, for better or for worse. Don't put all your hopes on them. Those big global companies make their ways in the world and create jobs in various different industries. Let them do their jobs and contribute to the economy in their own ways. Personally, I'll be happiest if we, the average people, can take care of ourselves. Yeah. However, we average people can't improve by just getting one, two, or three percent more. Why not? Because we're currently making $1,000, $2,000, or $3,000, and 3% or even 10% of that makes no difference. What kind of growth rate would be sufficient? We have to earn 100, 200, 500, even 1,000% more. These are the rates we need. Can the government do that for you? They can't. Then what should we do? We have to learn to take care of ourselves. How and with what are we going to take care of ourselves? Anyone? What an easy question. I want you to think of the role atomy is currently playing. If we want to start any business, we must have capital. Isn't that right? You've got to have capital. What kind of capital is readily available to you? 
Those other outrageous MLMs want you to shell out several thousand dollars as your initial investment. In that case, if you don't make more than that several thousand dollars, you take a loss, don't you? That's why there are so many victims of such scams. You should never take losses in business. You can do the Atomy business without incurring any losses. I'll tell you how. See these daily necessities here? You use toothbrushes, put on lotion, take Hemohim, shampoo your hair, and eat noodles every day. If these Atomy goods are more expensive and of lesser quality than those sold at discount stores, department stores, home shopping networks, and internet shopping malls, you shouldn't use them. Don't use them. However, if these items are of better quality, yet of lower price than what you've been using, wouldn't it be better for you to use these goods, whether you do the Atomy business or not? Most certainly. Do you see what I'm talking about? That means you possess more than enough intelligence to do the Atomy business. If you ever think, am I smart enough to do this? Or will my weak academic background keep me from succeeding? Just put it out of your mind. What I just told you is the most crucial aspect of the Atomy business. In other words, are Atomy goods of better value than what you usually use? If you're able to go to our website, check the prices of our goods and decide for yourself whether or not they're priced lower than the other brands. If you can do this, you are intelligent enough to succeed in the Atomy business. So please stop making excuses. Many people make excuses, saying they're not smart enough, or they have poor education, or some other reason for failure. As long as you're capable of understanding that using Atomy goods is advantageous for you, you have the ability to tell that this business has potential. Look, everyone uses daily necessities. We have to. We use them even when we're poor, right? Even the poor brush their teeth, don't they? Of course. They shampoo their hair, right? Of course they do. Things like that are required in life. Interestingly, more cosmetics are sold in slow economies. Why is that? During our IMF crisis, every sector of the economy did poorly, except for cosmetics. Before the crisis, wives could afford to take it easy at home. Once their husbands lost their jobs, many women decided to find work. They had to put on makeup to go out and look for jobs. People bought more cosmetics, so cosmetics companies made more sales. Cosmetics sell even in a slow economy. The slower the economy is, the more cosmetics are sold. I'm saying that our products are bound to be sold, regardless of the economy. We use these goods regardless of economic conditions.